Hello and welcome to the Couch Crickets, episode three. How's it? And welcome back to the couch. Uh, whew, what an emotional week! Huh? I know. Are you coping, Carl? It's been I'm hectic. Str- I'm struggling, Brio, to be honest. Um, yeah, a bit disappointed uh, in myself and you for releasing this episode a day late. But you know, <laughs> but some have been some circumstances, circumstances, and sometimes this whole engineering job and medical doctor job it tends to get in the way a bit but anyway a day late here we are but now fortunately we're able to include the india versus south africa game as well in our review of this week although i'm not sure if we want to <laughs> yeah as we record um india edged closer to winning uh, the the match against south africa um it's not over yet but the fat lady is clearing her throat <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, so Carl, it's been uh, an interesting first week of the World Cup, um, not the best for South African supporters. Uh, we've said that we don't want to focus solely on the South African team, but with South Africa having played three games this week and us being South African, we're probably going to dedicate the first little opening section of this episode to them. And let's be honest, <laughs> for me anyway, it's quite a lot to deal with emotionally, so... I'm, we're gonna have to talk about it. <laughs> we're gonna have to talk about it, and it's it's um, it's not easy because we want to be positive and sort of uplifting on the podcast. <laughs> but it's it it has been a tough week. I mean, if we just start out, I honestly didn't think we were terrible against England. Um, yeah, and let's be honest. Like I was the all, ever the optimist, predicting a win for South Africa, but. If you take a look at the England's performances over the last 12 months and where they're ranking at the moment and the, the quality of cricket they're playing, it, it's not embarrassing losing to England. So, you know, not too sort of phased by the result, more sort of phased in how it happened. For those of you who missed the game, you know, England batted first. They got a total of 311 for eight. And then South Africa got bowled out for 207 in 39.5 overs. Yeah, I mean, people will look at 311 and, and say, oh, the bowling was terrible. But actually, I thought we did quite well to take wickets at regular intervals. And um, on a what seemed to be a relatively batting-friendly-ish pitch, to to keep them to 311, Honestly, I got messages off at, at the innings break saying they were maybe 15 runs short, 20 runs short. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought halfway, I thought we're in for a big battle here, 350 plus. But I think in, especially, I mean, we can start off with Lungi and Gidi. I thought he was a bit wayward in that first spell, but came back towards the end of the innings and picked up a couple of wickets and really pulled it back. So, I mean, he picked up Stokes, who scored 89, and he picked up Ali, who can be quite a danger on his day so I mean overall I think 311 not the worst bowling effort I think maybe our fielding was a bit lacking yeah I'll get back to the fielding now but the other thing that impressed me was our, our tactics I thought opening with Inran Tahir was an, an inspired choice um, the just changing on, of the yeah, just on that Imran Tahir maybe kept him on for one over too much yeah I think in two um, instances Tahir took three overs up front where Maybe two was enough. And they tried to get overs out of Aidan Markram. And his first two overs went for very few runs. And then his third one, he took a bit of mm. stick. So I think, um, yeah, maybe maybe one over less. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, obviously, hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty, So pretty easy to say they're sitting here. So I mean, mm. yeah. So all in all, a bit disappointed in the fielding effort. But 311, not that bad. I mean, considering England have a great batting lineup and things like that mm. not the worst but it was the batting effort that that bothered me to be completely honest once again just a recap for those of you who didn't get the game Quinton de Kock scored a 68 and Rassi van der Tessen or as I like to refer to him Rassi van der Business <laughs> scored a little 50 of 61 tools but um whew, basically we got a bit rattled by Jofra Archer and his pace he was explosive I mean um, he took out Amla not by taking his wicket but by giving him a concussion unfortunately he even had to leave the field and Markram had to come in essentially opening and um, Archer was on fire and got him and sort of rattled our whole top order and I thought that just sort of set the tone for the whole batting innings and 
Oof, it was difficult to recover from there. Yeah, and I think the other thing was England's fielding was amazing. Um, oh. Jason Roy at backward point yeah. saved a whole bucket load of runs. And every time you thought a South African player has now really timed the ball nicely, it went straight to the mm-hmm. field or got half stopped or something along those lines. And then obviously the the beautiful catch. <laughs> Are we talking about it? <laughs> the Ben Stokes catch. The Ben. Oh, that was unbelievable. For those of you who didn't see it, I'd recommend a little YouTube there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Dile Pesukwayo played a sweep so- shot from Rashid. I think it was actually quite a good sweep shot. Mm. Um, and under normal circumstances, probably would have cleared the fielder. But Ben Jokes just <laughs> took an absolute cracker. <laughs> like a little backwards, back of the hand, jumping in the air, plucking the apple madness. Yeah, well, go check it out on YouTube. But I mean, <laughs> just to give an indication, all the English commentators are going on, it's the best catch ever. Yeah, so. It may be a bit of, you know, um, maybe a bit of an overdramatic response, but nonetheless, amazing. Go check it out. Yeah. Um, but like I said, we lost to England. Yes, I didn't want to lose by 104 runs. But sort of expected to lose to England, although we predicted South Africa might <laughs> might upset yeah. them. It became quite clear quite early on in the game that England weren't going to be rattled easily, yeah. and um, was sort of looking forward to getting our the winning ways of the mm-hmm. campaign going against Bangladesh. <laughs> you know, I just want to point out two dismissals in our batting performance, which were particularly disappointing for me and I know we try to be positive but we do need to sort of I thought the run out I mean we're going to get to the Bangladesh now Bangladesh game now but I mean basically the same thing happened there was a bit of a mix up in a run out in this first game against England it was the run out of Dwayne Pretorius which was for me very disappointing Um, and as well I I feel like JP Dumini played a horrible shot (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's once again it's easy for us to sit you know in on the couch and talk about it but um yeah, that was particularly disappointing so i mean that's it for england i mean didn't ex- like you said didn't expect to lose by so much but you know not the end of the world then we moved on to bangladesh Yo. yeah and i mean we expected to be able to bowl first bowl them out cheaply get the runs get two points get our net run rate up and just be peachy after yeah, that. Yeah, you know, kick off our campaign on, on a bit of a more positive note than the English game. Yeah, but I, I mean, our openers t- sort of started things off and we didn't get an early wicket and then... Um, didn't seem to get anything out of the pitch, really. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Giri left the field after four injured, overs. A a, and then suddenly they were looking peachy. And their middle order, you know what? I was quite impressed with how they batted. Shaki Palasan, Mushviku Rahim, both of them got 70-odd. But together with Sumya Sarkar, they really played the South African pace bowlers quite well, in my opinion. So it's one thing to say, oh, Ngiri went off and we were struggling. and But I do feel Bangladesh deserves some credit for that. Definitely. And I mean, we saw, we'll get to the game properly just now, but the West Indies bounced out Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And I think our bowlers... Thought they were going to bounce they were going to do the same. Well. And Bangladesh stood up to the challenge so well. And I always think, if you go and look at the all-rounder rankings, Shakib Alassane is top of those rankings. And I always think, oh, is he is he worth the number one all-rounder ranking? But in this game, full full um, kudos to him. Yeah, because he bowled his fair share of 10 overs as well. I mean, I think yep. uh, one for 50. Yeah, one, one for 50. 50 um, and uh, got a 75, looked really good. Lucky that Imran Tahir got him from our perspective. But, mm. uh, yeah. And then, yeah, anyway, so they batted really well. They got 330. Um, disappointing because, I mean, suddenly we were fast bowlers short and we had to get a lot of overs from sort of Markram and Dumini. And, but then our batting, once again, I mean, if you look, take a look at our batting scorecard, we've got the top six scores go 23, 45, 62, 38, 41, 45. Sorry, that's the top seven, actually. As a team, we ended up with 300. We lost by 30-odd runs. Yeah. The thing is, it only needed one of the top seven, who all got starts, to make, you know, a big one. And we would have won that game, even, you know, 
So yeah. we, we, I see now we got, we made 309 actually, not mm. just so you lost by 21 runs. So I mean, t- it needed one person to go on and uh, not having one, one batsman go on to make a hundred after our top seven all made a start is, is quite disappointing. Yeah. And again, it felt like some of the dismissals were quite soft, mm. not necessarily particularly good balls. I know when you're chasing 330 at some point, you got, you got to take a risk. You got to take a risk, but. Some some dismissals looked really bad. I'm really disappointed with uh, how, well, not how, but that Aiden Markram got out. With him being on 45 and looking set and batting with Fuff, I just thought if they can bat through and form a huge partnership and help us win the game, it can be the making of him as a player. But getting out in an untimely fashion. Yeah, he seems to be in a bit of a, bit of a, I don't want to say a rut, but... Sort of a bit of a habit. He's, he's bred a bit of a habit of sort of making a start, getting like a 30 or 40 and then getting out, which is super disappointing because we know he's a high quality player. So I think we're just desperate for like a, a bit of a hero up there in our top order. And yeah. yeah, we're still looking for one. And then, I mean, okay, so we lost the game. Didn't get the 330. Disappointing, but, you know, Bangladesh, they did defeat us in the 27 World Cup as well, actually. Um, I, I, I saw that while we... Yeah, they did. Yeah. Sure, it was us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, they beat Yeah, they India. beat us in the 27 World Cup. We can go check this. Okay, um, must go check this. <laughs> Christian is checking the facts for us while, but I'll chat for you, with you <laughs> so long. <laughs> so, I mean, they have been beating some big opponents of late. So it's not an embarrassment to lose Bangladesh. No, to, for, to lose sure, Bangladesh. for sure. They're not minnows anymore. No. They're a real team, uh, but they're a real team that we'd expect to beat. Yes. They're still, you know, times. if you take a look at the ODI rankings, they're still ranked eighth or something like that. So, I mean, you expect South Africa to beat them, especially in English conditions where it's sort of generally more seam bowler friendly. But, you know, such is life, it happens. And yeah. So now South Africa, two out of two. Just the last comment about the Bangladesh game. What was more disappointing for me, because if you look at the final score, we didn't lose by that much, 20-something mm. runs. Mm. Um, but on. when we, in the field, we dropped our heads, the body language went out the window. It didn't look like anyone brought any spark to the situation there. And I know that's the impression that I got on TV, and it's maybe not the, what the players mm. were feeling, but that's how it felt. And with the batting as well, when things started going south, People kept making mistakes and it just didn't feel like anyone was stepping up, really. Just a side insert, just confirm that 2007 World Cup, Bangladesh with the South Africa, a Super 8 match. And uh, Bangladesh scored 251 for 8 and we were bowled out for 184. Get wrecked. Ironically, um, a lot of players of the Bangladesh team still playing for them. But anyway, that's another that's another topic. Um, I just want to sort of confirm what you're saying. Once again, just seeing it on TV, so not necessarily 100% accurate, but you do get a bit of a general flat vibe coming from the Proteos team at the moment, especially when things don't seem to go their way. But anyway, so then we lost the first two and we moved on to India today and started off by winning the toss and batting. Which is not necessarily the worst option ever, but a um, little bit of a collapse up there. Just but Bumra bowling absolutely beautiful. I mean, he bowled some quality deliveries to Quinton de Kock this morning. He did, and the ball was moving around. To be fair, Quinton de Kock, the one he got out to, he was probably could have wide, left. Yeah. yeah, But there were plenty of others that could have had his, his name yeah. on it. So... Um, no, a, diff- a d- difficult period to get through there in terms of how well they bowled. India then turned to what's proven to be South Africa's kryptonite with the spin bowlers. So uh, quality spin bowling. Quality spin bowling from Kuldeep Yadav. Um, Chahal. Chahal. And Kedar Yadav. Kedar Yadav. So, That's a bit confusing there. Uh, yes. Yadav, both two Yadavs. So but anyway. Kuldeep is going to be the one guy and then Yadav is going to be, be the other, other guy. Yeah, okay. And just to give you some context about... The great variety that this three-man spin attack has. Cool Deep Yadav is your left-arm sort of wrist spinner. 
bit of mystery about surrounding him, you know, got got a really good googly and things like that. And then you've got uh, Chahal, who's your traditional leg spinner. Right arm. Yeah. Right arm leg spinner. And then you've got Kedar Yadav, who's like a, a right arm off spinner, but he sort of tends to do all sorts of funny stuff like bowls with a really sort of low round arm and really yeah, interesting. It, it looks like Mal- Malinga started bowling spin. <laughs> he comes right around yeah. the side. Well, he was bowling to left hand, but he was bowling around the wicket. Uh-huh. The ball was angling in sharply. So it was very interesting that the line of attack from the three spin is very different. And Sean Pollock also showed an analysis of the release points with um, Chahal releasing it from about two meters up and Yarav releasing it from about 1.6 meters up. Mm-hmm. So very different release points and different challenges that they all posed. Yeah, but anyway, so very interesting. Thanks. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> but moving on to what actually happened in the game. Boomra bowled a stunning spell up front, got Amlan de Kock. Then Faf and Fun of Business sort of solidified the innings a bit. But then Chahal came and, yo, I mean, I know people are going to criticize Rassi for playing that reverse sweep, but that ball drifted like a flipping mile. So, yeah. and. He looked a bit stupid, but that was that drifted a lot, man. I mean, <laughs> honestly, that was a top ball. I think yeah. um, you know Miller's dismissal felt soft. The Gordon ball, yeah. Um, JP Dumini missed the one that carried on instead of turning. No, so I don't know that it felt. I don't soft. know whether JP Dumini actually. I don't know because he was sort of played back and got. Sort mm. of LBW on the on the crease, but I don't know whether he thought that was the googly going to spin down leg or whether he just misjudged the length or I don't know. But you know, it's it's difficult because I mean, Bumrah took two wickets up front, and then I mean, if you look at the scorecard, it's Chahal, 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 Yadav, Chahal. Mm. So I mean, they basically ripped out a whole middle order with it. Well, even I mean, Miller got a thirty-one, and uh, Andilo, who, Andilo, in my opinion, batted quite well. Batted so well, and then for me, went for the big hits too early. There were about ten overs left, and uh, he decided that he was going big, and it was for about three, four balls in a row that he showed his intent, and then danced down the wicket to one. Well, and then, I mean, probably the well, I won't say the best, but probably the best innings of our sort of innings from Chris Morris, forty-two of thirty-four, showing that he he can bat. Well, we knew this, but I mean. Yeah, pulling it off today. And then KG Rabado applying himself and uh, yeah, pretty much right up there with one of the top scores of the innings. So we ended up with 227, which I mean, especially after seeing how the South African bowling effort went, which we'll get to now. There was definitely something in the pitch, a bit of extra bounce and things like that. So 227, not the worst score, I feel like, but I feel like we needed another 50, 50 at least to make it competitive yeah i think to be able to put any pressure on the indian batting lineup we need to get to at least 270 at least 250 but more like 270 Mm. um it wasn't a 310 320 pitch but um definitely high to 200s so india then went into bat and as we speak they're scoring the winning runs but a fiery spell, a fiery and encouraging spell from KG Rabada up at the start. Um, he ends the game with, you know, 2 for 39 of his 10. And he really bowled a, a quality spell up front, in my opinion. Imran also got the first over, actually. Not that effective like he was against England. Didn't pick up all good. But, you know, it's worth a shot. Didn't give away too many runs. And this, I wouldn't say the surprise, but, I mean, the most impressive performance for me of the day was Chris Morris. I mean... One for 36 in his 10, three maiden overs. He bowled really well. I mean, that's how Chris Morris can bowl. And I just wish he would be a bit more consistent. But, I mean, super happy for him. I mean, he got a 42 with a bat and a one for 36 of 10. That is, uh, that's a quality performance. Yeah, we said it in our sort of preview of the all-rounders that... He is a quality batsman and a quality bowler, but his stats don't show it. Yeah. And I think his performances haven't shown it really. I mean, his his bowling can sometimes be a mixed bag. But like you said, today he was on the money. Looked so good. I mean, to think Roy Chalmer got 100 in this game 
he's been set for most of the innings and still couldn't get Chris Morris away. Yeah, Just that's... shows you how, how accurately he was bowling. Yeah. And then, I mean, Andy Lepes Lukwayo, he's been bowling really well throughout the whole tournament. I'm, I've been really impressed with him. I know we spoke about it in our preview. We said, you know, he's basically up there to be picked as a bowler alone. But really been bowling well. So, just want to give him some kudos. I mean, he ended with um, one for 40 of 8.3, but he took the wicket of Virat Kohli and he really, really bowled well. Unfortunately, um, they picked Shamsi in this last game in against India and not unfortunately that they picked him unfortunately it seems like he didn't seem to be effective I watched most of the game and it just seemed that he didn't pose any threat I I don't know again from the couch but I wouldn't have picked him for this game just Mm. because the Indians are so good at playing spin Mm. Um, I would have gone with an extra seamer or an extra batsman and had part-time spin or something along those lines he may well be an option against teams that don't play spin so well, mm. um, against, say now, England or Australia or someone like that. But I think against the subcontinent teams who play spin so well and can read them out of the hand, he doesn't pose as much of a threat. Mm. It would have been interesting to see how Dwayne Pretorius would have went uh, against this. Yeah, this especially uh, this with Indian moving team around a bit. With the extra pounds. But I mean, Bjorn Hendricks on his way to replace Dale. I mean, we haven't even touched the situation surrounding Dale Stein. And Lungin Gidi. Personally, I'm super disappointed that Dale stands out um, of the World Cup. I know he tried his best to get back to fitness and it must be really hard for him. So, you know, no one's to blame. It's sport. Injuries happen and it's really, it's just really disappointing for me. And, and then in Gidi, I'm, I'm a bit worried about, to be honest. They said it's a hamstring issue. He'll be back within 7 to 10 days. But we'll have to see whether that's going to be the case. Fast bowling is an activity that's quite hard on your body. So, I don't know. And you don't want to have another situation where a bowler comes in, bowls four or five overs, and then needs to go off for an injury. Yeah, just before we move on to the the other games and the other teams, where do you see our team going from here, (laughs) Carl? I think we've got six games left in the group stages. And... uh, Unless we want to start working out run rates and theoretical things, we'd probably have to win all six to... We've touched on the fact that the way in which we've lost was a bit disappointing. But it's important to remember that in our first three games, we've played England, Bangladesh and India. So England and India are the number one and two teams in the world. So if you told me beforehand we'd lose to England and India, I'd be, you know, fair enough. So it's important to just sort of keep that perspective that we've had one game where we lost, where we, you know, really shouldn't have lost, in my opinion, if you just look at quality of sides. So it's not the end of the world, but realistically, to keep ourselves out of a situation where we need to calculate run rates and things, as you say, to make the semifinals, we'll have to basically win all our games from here on in. And I really think we can. Um, I think Australia will be quite a tough challenge. And New Zealand as well, depending on the pitch, because their seam attack seems to be quite hot at the moment. Mm. But I mean, Bangladesh, just as we're speaking, I'm looking at the scorecard, Bangladesh just put 244 up against their seam attack. So, obviously, you know, the seam attack can be handled. So, I don't think it's all doom and gloom, but I think with the loss of Dalstan and Ngiri, it's quite troubling for our bowling attack and we will... Before the tournament, we were looking at the bowling attack and saying, this is the best seam bowling attack in the world. And now suddenly we've got some big holes. And But hopefully Chris Morris can step up and fill, fill Stain's boots. And if Hingiri comes back and, you know, maybe a one or two quality performances from Pretorius. And it's not over till the fat lady sings, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I think this this. Um, bowling effort for me was very encouraging from a, from a South African standpoint. Yeah, so, I mean, India only got the runs in the 47, 48th over. Yeah, so I think that's a little bit of momentum to take into the next game. Hopefully, some of the players who thought they might be sitting on the sidelines or feel iffy about their spots in the team, someone like a Chris Morris can now hopefully feel more assured about his place in the team. Mm. I don't know, but possibly, and sort of grow into his role in the team and take more responsibility for what he's got to do. Okay, so before we, we move on to the next of the games, we've got some exciting news. 
We've got a giveaway this week. <laughs> <laughs> a giveaway. So if you've been watching any cricket on Supersport, you'll, you'll have seen the Casa Lager ads. And you'll see they advertise this 3-in-1 jersey, sort of South Africa supporters jersey, which includes sort of the rugby, the cricket, and the soccer. It's quite a nice jersey. So we've got one or two of those to, to give away. So. Who are you giving it to? Who are you giving it to? <laughs> How are you so, deciding? <laughs> so we're giving it to some listeners. So we're going to have a lucky draw. Oh, okay. Okay, but to qualify for the lucky draw, you have to also answer a quiz question. Okay, it's like by commenting. By, by yeah, 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 yeah. So you'll send it in to us. I'll explain. I'll explain it now. So how it works is so you have to follow us on Instagram, and you have to follow us on Facebook. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> to so, qualify, to qualify, <laughs> just to start off, you need to, you need to, you need to do that. That's then, on us personally. That's the couch. Crickets. Yeah, the couch at the at the couch. Crickets. Look for us. We're the, you know how our logo looks. You know, you'll find us. So that's the first two things. The, the third thing is um, you have to answer the quiz question, which will which will post on social media uh, together with the release of this episode. Okay. You have to comment the the answer, mm-hmm. and you have to share our post on your personal Facebook. So you have to like Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. To answer the question correctly. Yes. And you have to share. Yes. And you answer the question by commenting. You can't like SMS it somewhere. Yeah, no, you comment it. Okay. Okay. So it's actually (laughs) two likes, a comment and a share. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, so you have to get the question right. (laughs) But I have a, I have a very good question, but um, it's going to take some research. So okay. it's going to be interesting to see who actually gets the question right. And Don't make it too it. difficult. They've already got to do four things. But <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. Basically, yeah. Anyway, so it's going to be really nice. We're going to give away, act- it's actually two shirts. I remember I said one or two earlier, but it's two shirts. We're going to give away two of those supporter shirts. And given we've lost the first three games, hopefully, you know, you can. <laughs> you the can, Rugby World Cup is also <laughs> coming up this year. I'm joking. But <laughs> and you can use the, the, the shirt to give our boys some extra support now that I feel like they might need it. Okay, moving on to what actually happened in the other games in the World Cup. So we had England playing South Africa. We've already discussed that. The second match was Pakistan versus West Indies, which is a bit of a... That was a sh- for me, that was a shock. Yeah. I thought... Pakistan were the favorites going into that. And they got absolutely wrecked. Destroyed. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I just want to say, I want to quote myself from the first episode. <laughs> okay. If Pakistan show up, they can beat anybody. And if they don't, they can't beat anybody. Yeah. You know? So to, to follow that through in case you missed it, Pakistan lost miserably to the West Indies, who yeah. they were favored to beat. And then... Pick themselves up and beat England, the favourites for the competition, who they lost to multiple times in a yeah. in a series just before the World Cup. So just if you missed that, Pakistan got bowled out for 105. West Indies basically just ran in, banged it short, and the Pakistani batsmen couldn't handle it. And then, you know, Chris Gale and everybody else sort of got the runs fairly easily within like 13 or 14 overs. If I... So... Yeah, then they went on in their second game on Sunday. They played England. They scored 348. <laughs> yeah. Just maybe once again confirming that the English bowling lineup, if Jofra Archer and Chris Wokes isn't sort of on fire, it is possible to score a lot of runs against them. Then England chased, tried to chase that. They lost by 14 runs. Superb hundreds from um, Joe Root and Joss Butler. I mean, whew. and to be honest, I really thought they had that one in the bag until like sort of a, a late flourish, um, shut up gone, picking up, I think, Joe Root and yeah. Butler going as well. And then Wahab Riaz also putting in some, putting in some quality bowling to sort of stop them. Once again, I just want to make one, one point. In the series between Pakistan and England right before the World Cup, England chased 350 like two or three times. Mm. They they ended up just short in this case. Once again, just proving that the World Cup just adds that bit of extra pressure and sort of ensuring that, you know, 350 outside the World Cup is not 350 inside the World Cup. I agree with that. But at the same time, if I watch that game, England were never out of it. Mm-hmm. 
all their batsmen all the way down to Adil Rashid can hold a bat. Wheel they the can hit up. a sick. Rashid, Adil Rashid, <laughs> just a fun fact, Adil Rashid has 10 first class hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> and he bats number 10 for England. That is stupid. So I, I never felt like they were out of this chase. I think they were very unlucky with the timing of the dismissals. Mm. If Butler had have stayed in three overs more, three overs won. more, they would have been over the line. Mm. Um, it's just backpedaling just a little bit to the West Indies. Their fast bowling is very impressive. Mm. Um, with Jason Holder leading them. And, and also oh, Shane Thomas, he's yes. a big boy and he's fast. And then my boy Dre Russ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Um, so the West Indies, as much as they sort of snuck in under my radar anyway, I didn't fancy them coming into the tournament. I think they've got a really good bowling attack. Mm. And um, if some of their players come off, they can post big totals. Mm. Then the third match at Cardiff was New Zealand versus Sri Lanka. How Ooh. shame. How shame. Sri Lanka <laughs> getting absolutely wrecked by um, the New Zealand seam attack, which looks pretty damn dangerous. Well, that's my my second team. So if uh, South Africa's <laughs> no longer in the pictures, um, New Zealand's going to be my second team. And uh, they've really got a nice bowling attack there. Yeah, Matt Henry... Picking up three wickets, Trent Bolt won, Lockie Ferguson, who seems to be bowling some real quality, also picking up three. And, you know, Colin de Grandom with a bit of medium pace, yeah. a really balanced attack. So, And then they basically just knocked off the 137. Yeah, very interesting. Colin Monroe wasn't the, the first choice coming into this World Cup. Uh, I think Nichols was going to be the first choice. Opener, yeah. Um, first choice opener. But Monroe found a bit of form there. So hopefully he can carry that forward. Um, because it's obviously really nice to chase down a total uh, mm. with 10 wickets in hand. And Martin Guptill sort of starting off where he left off in the last World Cup. Mm. But so, I mean, it's a bit of a, it's a bit more one-sided than I expected. Mm. But New Zealand beat in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka hasn't been good over the last 12 months. So I'm not surprised. What I am surprised about is how well Afghanistan handled themselves against one, Australia, and then a couple of days later against Sri Lanka where they almost caused an upset. So just looking at the the game between Afghanistan and Australia, Afghanistan managed to put on 207, which might seem not a lot, but considering Australia has Mitchell Stark, Pat Cummins... And so forth, 207 is quite impressive, if you ask me. Yeah, they are the one team in the World Cup which you would definitely still count as minnows. Um, I'm not even sure if all their players are professional cricketers. Some of them might actually have other jobs. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll put that in the quiz question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But standing up to Australia, sure, it's not a great total, but getting over 200 is at least respectable. And, and they made them work for it uh, to chase it down. I mean, they only got in the 35th over. And, you know, unfortunately, well, fortunately, but unfortunately because I don't like him. But David Warner scoring a very cool, calm and collected 89 not out. Aaron Finch scoring some runs. So I must say the two batsmen back from the wilderness, Warner and Smith, they look hot. <laughs> they look so good. Yes. Smith might not have scored a lot of runs, but he was so good in the field. He yeah. affected a run out. He took a beautiful catch. <laughs> he looked so good. I think Australian fans are just too glad to have them yeah. back. So, th- And then just moving on to, I mean, Sri Lanka played Afghanistan as well. And Sri Lanka started off really well, then had like a massive collapse. <laughs> yeah. And then they were saved by the rain a bit. And then they put in a pretty good bowling display to sort of bowl Afghanistan out for 152. So in the end, Sri Lanka won by 34 runs. So it's relatively easy. But once again, really encouraging performance from Afghanistan. So I'm excited for them. Yeah, so Afghanistan looked like their strength is definitely the bowling with uh, Rashid Khan and Nabi. Nabi, yeah. Um, They've got a quality spin attack. And that opening fast bowler of theirs. To be, I must be honest, I didn't know him before this, for this World Cup. <laughs> That's life. Um, <laughs> but he, and he looks sort of inconspicuous. He runs in, 
but he flipping bowls it at 140 plus okay. and he got some wickets. Um, I was really impressed with that. So, oh. what's really just worrying? His name here. Uh, oh, Hamid Hassan. Yeah, he bowled really well in my opinion. Um, Sri Lanka. That was their first win in something like 12 games. Yeah. I think they had an 11 game losing streak. Yes. And even though they won the game, mm-hmm. that total is very poor. Yeah, and I, I they worry. won the game, and it, 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 yeah. I just worry about them going forward. Yeah. If they play, for instance, against India, have got a quality bowling attack now. Basically, if they play against anyone with a quality bowling attack, yeah, they, they seem to be in trouble. But hopefully, <laughs> something South Africa can capitalize on. Mm. And um, yeah. So that's basically all the games that, that's happened so far. I mean, as we're speaking, Bangladesh and New Zealand are still playing. So we'll have to wait and see. It seems like it might be a bit of a tight game there because New Zealand is chasing 244 and they're 69 for two or something. So, you know, that might be a, a tight game. But things we've learned in the first week, nobody's invincible. True. England, the favorites, losing to Pakistan. Um, All be Pakistan playing really well, but the point is... They can be beaten. South Africa, oof, not putting their best foot forward. But, you know, I'm still hopeful. Yeah. The fat lady has not sung yet. India, you know, in the first game looking solid. New Zealand looking good. So, all in all, very exciting. Yeah, I think there's some really nice matchups coming up in, in the near future. Australia playing West Indies tomorrow. I am... Buzzing for that one. Very interesting. The next day, Pakistan against Sri Lanka. Mm. Depends on if Pakistan wants to turn up or not. We don't know. And then on the 9th of June, Australia yeah, playing Sunday, India. Yeah. That is going to be massive. Yeah. And then basically every South African game now is, is must a must win. win yeah. So on Monday, 10th yeah, of playing, June, playing we play the West, West Indies. Indies so. so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, that might go really well for us. Or it might go <laughs> really bad. Because if Chris Gale gets a hold of you, it might just end our campaign. But, you know, the fat lady hasn't sung, as I've repeatedly <laughs> said yeah. in this episode. Maybe maybe we should make that the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> the fat lady hasn't sung. sung. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, as much as we've probably said some negative things about the team now, I think it's important for South Africans to rally behind the team. Mm. I think it's something that we do as South Africans. We expect to win games, mm. um, which as a proud sporting nation is probably acceptable. But I d- what I don't think is acceptable is when we sort of turn on our teams and criticize them. We should actually just support them through thick and thin. And uh, hopefully we as a nation can back our boy <laughs> a bit. Because they, they can turn it around. Mm. There's definitely enough of a spark there and enough talent there to turn it around. But it will take something special from where we are at the moment. Mm. So I think that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. Please take a look at our social media pages for the know-how and what to do for the giveaway. Um, I'm really excited to give away it's give away those two shirts. I'm very sad <laughs> that you're giving them away. I feel there's two shirts and there's two of us. But, uh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, doing it for the fans. Doing it for, <laughs> for the fans. fans. For so, the yeah. likes. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for joining us and... Um, We hope to see you next week on the couch again. Yeah, enjoy the games, those that you watch. And if you miss them, don't worry, we'll cover them for you. (laughs) 